Talk Show. Recorded live. <coughs> well, good evening. This is Fiona Schron, Huff, founder and CEO of Powerhouse Media Group and author of Powerhouse Pointers, Motivational Messages for Personal and Professional Empowerment. And I am blessed and so thankful to the Lord this evening yes. to come to you to bring forth the word about the blue topaz as a part of Rare Jewel Speak Virtual Women's Conference. Just to remind you, the scripture text that this conference is based on comes from Proverbs 2015 ISV, which says, there is abundance of gold and precious stones, but lips of knowledge are a rare jewel. I'm going to repeat that again. There is an abundance of gold and precious stones, but lips of knowledge are a rare jewel. The reason that I chose to speak on the blue topaz is because it's my birthstone. I am a December baby, December the 11th to be exact. I've always loved how the gym looked against my all chocolate complexion. The color reminds me of the powerful powder blue that you see when you're watching a commercial about the waters of Caribbean. How clear, inviting, and beautiful it looks. And then I started doing some research to get a better understanding of the gemstone, where it comes from, how it's derived, why it's so precious and important, and its significance from a biblical standpoint. Then, of course, how it applies to me and to you as women and men of God. The blue topaz in nature is very rare indeed. It tends to be a very pale blue. The vivid blue available on the market have been produced by treating white topaz with irradiation and often also with heat. The color change is permanent and stable. Due to residual radioactivity, the irradiated topaz must be held in a secure facility for a specific period of time before it can be released for heating, cutting, and polishing. The time varies from years, from weeks to years, depending on how it's been processed. There's a very strict rule in place to protect not only consumers, but also cutters and gym dealers who handle these on a daily basis. Topaz is a symbol of beauty, worthiness, precious gem, and seasonable. In the Middle Ages in Europe, topaz was believed to enhance mental powers and prevent insanity. It was also said to improve poor vision, promote favor with kings and civil authorities, increase wisdom, and soothe anger. When I was looking up the cost of the blue topaz, I wasn't surprised by the prices for jewelry because I already knew that as a precious gem, it was worth a very, very high price. The most commonly used color of topaz in jewelry are the blue types. A sky blue topaz and diamond halo cushion cut 14 karat gold ring from Now Blue Company is $1,100. An anello 14 karat white gold London blue topaz and 8 karat diamond ring from Overstock.com is $2,000. $357.99. An Essie 14 karat white gold and blue topaz ring with diamonds in a size 7 from Lord & Taylor is $1,000. And a natural blue 3.5 karat 14 gold diamond bridal set from Etsy is $985. So if you want the blue topaz on your ring, on your finger, on your neck, on your earlobes, you're going to pay a pretty price. There are many scriptures throughout the Bible which reference the topaz gem. I found it very interesting in Exodus 28 where it spoke of the people of Israel making Aaron holy garments, including a breastplate, an ephod, a robe, a broidered coat, a matron, and a girdle so that he could minister in the priest's office. Topaz was one of the gems to make the breastplate in verse 17. In Ezekiel 28, 13, Job 28, 19, and Revelations 21, 20, topaz is again mentioned. 
this gem is significant to the Bible because of how precious it was, that it was used for royalty, and, it was, that, and that it was a blessing as a gift. So what does this mean that I've shared thus far in regards to the conference text? which again comes from Proverbs 2015, uh, which says, again, there is an abundance of gold and precious stones, but lips of knowledge are a rare jewel. Well, you can rock the blue topaz all you want, and, and in fact, look great at doing so. However, what's greater is the ministry in your heart to speak from your mouth to empower the people. And so I use myself as an example. I am a single mother of two children, of a 15-year-old who just started high school, and to a seventh grader. And the journey of being a single mom and, and being one at the beginning of my parenting um, experience hasn't been a joke. You know, when you see my smile, I smile because I'm happy inside because I know that God covers me, but there have been so many times where I have shared tears because the journey is, again, no joke, it's, it's very tough. But because I know that God covers me, I know that he has purposed me to have these children and then to be an example to other women who happen to be single moms, to let them know that when you trust in God, that you give yourself your children to God, that he will take care of you. Now, he gives us tears because he knows that we need to release. But those tears turn into smiles uh, later on because, again, you realize that he's carrying you. And so when I minister to single moms, when I do my annual Mother's Day uh, event and when I'm just speaking to single mothers who I know, who I come across, I share my story. I'm very transparent because I want them to know that God got them, that they can do it as well. When it comes to business, you know, I, I, I gave Powerhouse Media Group, Solomami Magazine, um, Powerhouse Portraits, the book, everything I gave to him. They are precious. He gave them to me, and so I give them back to him because I want other people to be blessed, to know that whatever they're going through, whatever you're going through, that you can use your challenges to minister to others because somebody else, even on this line, may be going through something. And what I'm sharing through, through the wisdom, um, through, through the, 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 the precious jewel of my knowledge, is going to empower you, is going to empower them. And then when you share it with somebody else, it's going to empower them. When I'm in the neighborhood, the, the children, they see me and they say, Miss Fiona, I did my homework on I'm doing good, Miss Fiona. That makes me feel good because they see something in me. They see the rare jewel in me. And because I carry God with me, they come to me and I can be able to minister to them without even having to quote scripture and all of that, but just living the word out living the word out and just being happy in what I'm doing. So I just want to encourage you all to please, whatever it is that you've gone through. Now, you don't have to tell all of your, your business, but you need to share because what we've gone through and what we've come out, we need to be able to share with other people so that they can be healed, so that they can be delivered, so that they can be set free, so that they can then tell somebody else, what God has allowed them to go through, get through, to overcome so that they can be in a better place. And so we just can continue to share our rare jewel of our knowledge. So that is the meat of what I wanted to give to you all this evening. I didn't want it to be long. I just wanted to be straight to the point and to let you know that you all are rare jewels, that you all have something inside of you that you need to share, that it is important that you share it, that you live your life with transparency, and that you allow God to use you because there's knowledge in your, your mouth, in your belly. It has to come out. So I thank you again so much for just taking this time to be with me. And uh, at this time, if there are any questions, any prayer requests, you know, anything that you want to ask me, I I, I welcome it.